<laughs> Any other resolutions by board members this evening? Um, I don't know if it necessarily needs to be a resolution, but um, I was just wondering, and I apologize for bringing up your favorite subject. Um, being that the, the board has kind of decided that with the new scoreboard approved purchase that we are holding off on that until we have a sponsorship in line. Uh, I'm assuming at this point, uh, you know, end of June, even if we have the sponsors lined up today, that we would not be able to build this new, new scoreboard in time for the opening of the next school year. Am I, am I correct with that? We're at the drop table. Right. So I think assuming that, uh, we need to take some steps forward to ensure that the current scoreboard is fully functional and ready to roll for the beginning of the next year because it's looking like we're going to have to depend on that for for the foreseeable future until we get these sponsors on board. So I'm just looking for any kind of answer on uh, any movement we've had in that regard. If we contacted uh, the vendor about uh, replacement parts and coming and doing an estimate, things like that. Yeah, we, we have to go to the microphones so the folks at home can hear, please. That is what we've spoke about. We have talked to the vendors. Um, there's a few of them, obviously, within uh, the, that can handle that. Uh, we have plenty of time yet to do that. We have some efforts out there right now with sponsorships but we are at the drop dead point as far as being able to be ready for opening day even if we said today we move forward with the big with, the with, big the, score. with a new not, one. not not necessarily with not with pieces. repairs repairs we still have plenty of time okay. to get that done uh, we were just kind of waiting on the feedback of the sponsorship efforts so it looks like that's the route we would be taking is to repair until we get that so you know we're not without a scoreboard come opening day right you know so that is definitely our plans to have up and running for that okay so mr brown now I'm, I'm curious about something will sponsors only participate if it's a three hundred thousand dollar electronic scoreboard aren't, aren't are they not interested if it's a the scoreboard we have with perhaps you know a banner atop or the a banner on the side so with the current you know climate out there with scoreboards what we have no they're not interested um, we don't have anything but a small banner it's not really a comparable item to what you see out there you know with the other districts and what they're but I, paying I looked for at some of, i looked at some of those other scoreboards mm -hmm. and although a lot of them had uh, the main part of the the scoreboard had a lot of electronic movement they had what looked like fixed fixed ad panels on right, the sides on the side so um where our scoreboards located and the size of it it's and that was something i believe was in the mix when that scoreboard was first put out there it just didn't pan out and the dollars are much different you know uh, for what we would be paying for the repairs of the existing scoreboard to get it up to working condition it's still a scoreboard that technology is 15 20 years old it's not the video boards that are you know out there today with the new technology but we are still looking to secure the sponsorships prior to moving forward and that's where the location has a lot to do with it the I, I visibility understand. right i understand you know, the location's so. critical and just to save time i certainly would never support this scoreboard without knowing who the sure. entity is what the arrangement is when they plan on providing the funds so if we're not anywhere near that point then let's get this scoreboard fixed let's live with the shame of an old-fashioned scoreboard i don't know how we'll all get by but darn it let's try and if someone comes up with some money and tells us when then let's talk about that that's that's excellent and we looked at uh alternative advertising like i know it's been mentioned like some advertising space on the turf itself is that something we're presenting as well when we're looking at sponsorships for this 
that's really not my um, end of it. Uh, you, Dr. Short could probably elaborate on that much better than I could. To answer your question, yes. Um, previously, to uh, add to uh, Mr. Boba's uh, question about sponsorship, we've had banners in the past uh, on the fence across the stadium, uh, probably four or five that come to mind. I don't necessarily want to name the companies uh, that have uh, ranged from three to five hundred dollars per banner. Uh, I think that's been the cost. So. Uh, that is still actively being pursued as well as the, um, the field stencil, if you want to call it. All right, now, Scotty, in order to repair this, is it true that we might need a board resolution right now to table the high-end scoreboard for one more season? Because if we don't repair it with a motion that's approved by the board, then the, st the standing protocol exists and Bob Brown would be forced to follow what we instructed him to do, which was purchase the new school board very quickly. I have a question here too. Thank you, Mr. Ritter. A question <coughs> for my solicitor or my uh, president of the board. A few months ago, we uh, voted on this seven to two. Um, all of a sudden, about a week later, two weeks later, we have a table because we had trouble with the mall and stuff. But the thing is, what is a vote any good if we back down from the vote? What's a 7-2 vote if the, that's a board's decision at the time? How can we back down from the vote right now? If you're asking me, if you haven't spent the money and haven't engaged and entered into a contract, a written contract, you have a right to rescind that and not go any further. But the rest of the board will have to um, vote on it again, won't they? When you, mo when you made a motion, when the motion to table passed, it's presently on the, ta on the table and it's not, it's not on the agenda yet. You have to bring it back to, it's not on the table. You have to bring it back onto the table uh, to, to vote on it again because it's been tabled. You don't we never formally tabled it. Yeah. We no, didn't we formally haven't. table nothing. Okay. But well, my question well, is this, then, then if, then you if Mr. Shaw would cut a check for this company. Well, he'd be covered. He'd be covered because we already voted for this. So you better, you better take some, then Mr. Ritter's comment is well taken. You should take some sort of action to preclude the administration from proceeding in accordance with your prior vote of 7-2 to, to, to buy it. Right now, no contract's been entered into. So you, you still have a window of opportunity to say the administration don't enter into that contract. And I would do that by a tabling motion to the scoreboard subject completely and there's no purchase made at this point. And just so the board's aware that we've had these discussions um, within the budget meetings and we have agreed and we have submitted a number of pamphlets out there to area businesses and companies requesting uh, sponsorship. So the information is out there in the public. Uh, we were simply waiting for, uh, and it's only been truly a month, uh, for sponsorships to come in, thus to show the board that it would be paid for. So we are in a position where we're not going to purchase until Mr. Bova and said it very well, we would like to present to the board those companies, those entities who wish to become a sponsor, and then the board would have to approve that moving forward. Okay, so you've heard from your superintendent, and I think that kind of brings finality to it. He has said that not, the administration is not going to purchase a scoreboard, notwithstanding your vote 7-2 to approve it, based upon the fault based upon the events that took place following the vote, and that is this further discussion about having sponsors versus us paying for it. So right now, the, the scoreboard matter, the super scoreboard is in limbo. And until such time as you get sponsors, I don't think anybody's going to be purchasing a scoreboard. And if I well, may. For, for public perception, I think we should make a formal purchase for the board. Guy, can you repeat that? Sorry about 
we, we couldn't. From public perception, I think it's proper to make a formal motion to formally table the scoreboard. Motion. Mary Beth, we can't hear you. From <laughs> public perspective, she said it'd be better for us to table it. Is that correct, Mary Beth? Yeah. Yes. I was just I was just going along with Dr. Short's yeah. comments. Look, the formal thing to do is to make a motion to table the scoreboard matter and and uh, purchase of the scoreboard at this time. So do I hear a motion? So John's going to make the motion. To, uh, my motion is that we table the proposed purchase of a new high school auditorium scoreboard and that we proceed with the repair and maintenance of the existing school board <laughs> and that we proceed with the acquisition of potential sponsors for the new school board. Did you say I, I would auditorium? second that if we amend auditorium to yeah. football field. What did I say? What did I say? Yeah, not auditorium. Um, if they need a scoreboard, we have all the High school, <laughs> high school <laughs> stadium school board. That's the yes. Okay, so we have a second. Okay. I'll, I'll read it again. Yeah, you I, don't I don't have to. think you need to. We got it. Okay. I think everybody wants to second. We have a table and a second. There's no discussion. No discussion. Right? Ronnie, call. can we have a roll call, please? Everybody knows this is to table the scoreboard. Not well, it's, away it's, with it's by table. part. One part is the tabling, and the other part is to proceed with two things acquisition of sponsors, so that's not tabled, and to proceed with the repair and maintenance of some existing piece of equipment. Right. So, can I wrap all three of those into one you, motion? You did it. You did it. <laughs> so roll call, Bonnie. There you go. Dr. Kalkstein. Aye. Mr. Lapsovich. No. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. I have a question. There's another There's question. Chair. Chair. Table. Table. I understand that, Mary Beth. Thank you. Um, no. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Bova. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Motion, motion carries. carries. What was the count, please? 7-2. Seven two. Seven two. No abstentions? Yeah, the scoreboard, you can see. No abstentions. Thank you. Can you email that to me, John? Right. No. Can I have Okay, no. I will. Am I allowed to who, ask who was the seconded, please? Yeah. Who seconded? Okay. Mr. Rick McIntyre. Okay. Um, I know Dr. Short, myself, um, several others have been out there for sponsorship and we're waiting for sponsorship because it just has been packets have been put together if the sponsorship comes through what do we do in that situation just on table, table. Motion to on table. On table. But again i think as far as timing goes i'm saying i, I think we're past that point for this coming season well here here's here's the, the long and the short of it if you get a sponsor next week tomorrow Whenever anybody on this board can make a motion on the table, get a second, and vote on it. Now, it might be too late and it might not be too late, but the fact remains is Valerie needs to know she can, she, you, there's a lifeline there. If there is somebody that comes forward, and I, I agree, I mean, to get a sponsor to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars in two months is asking a lot. Yes. And, and that doesn't mean you might not get a sponsor by the end of the summer. And who knows? what miracles can be done at the end of the, it's August, September, and somebody says, hey, I've got uh, three or $400,000 to spend on a scoreboard. Maybe you start construction then, and maybe you don't get all of the football season with it, but you get the last game of the year. I don't know. Somebody like Dyson says. Yeah, somebody like the engineers, <laughs> or, you know, that. Yeah. I, I, would, I would suggest to you that, that that process is there, Valerie, and you can untable it any, if you can get the votes to untable it, it's untable. Well, I agree with you because even if it's October, you still can construct that right. square border. Without effect, but it's there. Existing. And you'll have it for spring uh, ball. Soccer, or you can have it for anything. Thank you. So, um, just to further beleaguer the scoreboard topic, I, uh, Mr. Brown, if I could have you go back up to the podium, I apologize. I know how much you love being up there. And you didn't um, <laughs> say who you were. Um, I've been reviewing the the meeting that occurred uh, when we voted on this scoreboard, and um, th there are a number of things that happened in that meeting that, um, that that I just feel like I need some explanation, uh, some closure on, so we can kind of move forward. 
because um, the more I watch it, kind of the more upset I get. Um, it, I asked at one point uh, if this had gone through a formal bidding process, and it, it, I think Mr. Shaw interjected and said this went through co-stars. Right. So, but then I'm confused about how that procedure works now because if we got the bid through CoStars, why are we receiving a bid directly from OES and directly from allegedly from Vactronics, even though they say they didn't? Like that. That to me got really murky about the bidding process. Well, like I said, it wasn't a formal bid. Um, matter of fact, let me just. Find that. Well, aren't aren't all of those bidders? Approved through CoStars. Right. Yeah. What? And I think the OES one, though, it was through. I'm just trying to find a copy of the resolution. Here we go. We uh, that's impressive. If you actually have that on you. I have it right here. Yeah. Uh, actually, this yeah. resolution. And as a matter of fact, I, I can read it if you'd like, just so we have some this clarification in terms of what we're talking about. Uh, approve the purchase of a new Gateway High School Stadium scoreboard as budgeted for in the capital reserve fund budget and a projected total amount of approximately $300,000 from OES Inc. through the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, NCPA. So that was their purchasing cooperative that they were offering that through that we were able to purchase it from. Dectronics was through CoStars. So again, it's another purchasing so two cooperative. Different two different places that have already publicly bid this Correct. item. Correct. That's the idea of the CoStars. There are a bunch of different places you can go to that have already publicly bid the merchandise or service or whatever it is you're, you're uh, seeking to purchase and once that's been done you don't now you are not required to go out and do a public bid of it Correct. again you can take it through that that entity that is already nationally affiliated to do that and what i'm hearing paul say is both both entities had that kind of uh, blessing they had already been through the the screening process of public bidding Correct. Didn't we do the same thing with the turf? Yes. Yeah, we actually purchased the, the, the new turf that's currently on, at the stadium through. It's called E&I. It's another purchasing cooperative as well. Rick, just to add to the murkiness here, for my own sake, and that that is the flexibility that could be involved with the customization of a scoreboard. In other words, it's, it does not seem possible for anyone to respond to a bid and put all possible variations or customizations for a potential school board because they don't know what the shading's going going to be, so they don't know what sort of um, um, light emitting diodes to use, where there's going to be it, 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 in the direct sunlight. Right, they or, don't know the specific they, needs of each. Right, and so they, they don't know what to charge for those. They don't know um, how many pieces of panels we want attached, what what the color scheme is, what the software is, and all that. So they put out a general bid we can come back and be dissatisfied with that and want either more or less and so now they've got to go back and bid a different price for it so I think I, I just want you to all know that this discussion these discussions are really not in order because you've tabled the matter and they, they yeah. should be discussed when you bring it off the table again but let's just keep going here for a second I think when they go through those co-star those those criteria Many of those factors are factored in, and I think that there, are, and I appreciate that there's the subtleties of what changes could be made, but the advantage of doing that, and, and I know that school districts, I know that municipalities, I know that other people that, that get involved in the purchase of signs go through these public entities, use them regularly, and don't have any problem uh, being able to defend the position if someone takes the position where you had to publicly bid it. I think when you get the blessing of, of one of those affiliates, you're, you, you're okay. You're not going to have the, uh, the wrath of some other bidder coming in and saying, wait a minute, you didn't give me a chance to publicly bid it. That's the whole idea of going through that process. I just, I just know that that's what goes on. Right, and that's why I'm. This is not so much about a particular item like a scoreboard. This is about the, the murkiness of some per high, high priced purchased object and how that occurs, so that the board can understand. Right, I, I just what I, these I'm not that familiar are. with exactly. that actual process. I guess I had a different 
um, I idea of how that went. And I think actually you bring up a good point. You're not going to go to the, the co-stars and there's not a menu there where, okay, they have the exact scoreboard I need. It's this much. And like Amazon and you buy it. And, and I get that. So that, that that's uh, sufficient explanation. So I, I, I'm a little bit clearer on that. I appreciate that. You get a gold now, now, to, to, no, to no, move. I'm unclear on that. So okay. let me stop one moment. Yeah. Even through co-stars, typically the buying entity says we need a scoreboard and has at least some framework of the thing they want to buy. And I mean, I've been involved with the purchase of dump trucks and police cars, and you don't tell them exactly what you want, but you say, we need a police car to serve this purpose. And bidders respond with their answers, with their solutions. And typically, there are at least a couple of bidders, and there's a process where you open the bids, public process, and see what there is. Who's got what, what's there? I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> Fair enough. I think Mary Beth That's lost Mary signal. Beth, just go ahead. So this process, and, and I will apologize in advance, I came in right in the middle of this. It's my first meeting, and it was clear there was not that method that I'm familiar with. And given the, the size of this purchase, I'm still surprised that it works in this manner. I'm not saying it's wrong. Well, I'm not saying there's anything remotely illegal. I mean, we could be publicly bidding this very easily. It's just, it, it, it surprised me. And again, Mr. McIntyre, I want to, since we're talking about this, we then heard that our scoreboard, all, I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth, but basically couldn't be repaired or it was very difficult to repair, which is why we had this time crunch. Yeah, I think the actual quote, and that was something I was going to ask Mr. Brown about, was that the, the, the parts necessary to repair the current scoreboard were, were becoming impossible to, to obtain. And I, I just, I want some clarification on that. Like, do you have any records of you, you know, reaching out to Dactronics, requesting parts and being denied? I had given every email and converse of every conversation that I had to, uh, there was a few board members that requested them along with Dr. Short. Um, and that's where that information came from was Daptronics. And all the conversations that we've had, you'll never see once that he offered that up. I, what, I'm repairs, you, what I'm asking you is I never is it about asked that because our conversation went by the way of, you know, he never brought that to the table. This now, this conversation you speak of is in regards to a new scoreboard. No, this no. is in regards to repairing our old one that he had been out here himself or his people at many different occasions along with ours. And rebuilding what was in there was never part of the equation. It was always so if it was know, never part difficult. Of the thing okay. for him to do. That was why our conversations three years ago started at looking at a potential new board. Okay, what I'm asking you is if we attempted to get replacement parts for this scoreboard and failed. I have to go through somebody like Dactronics to get that. Right, you know, so have the to type have of people to do that. He has repaired it throughout the years, but not to the point we still, it breaks down. That's what we're concerned about. Even though he gets the parts and repairs it, something else goes. Okay, you know, what, what I'm trying to get to, to the root of here is your statement in that meeting was that the replacement parts are becoming impossible to get or getting and, harder to find. I'm trying to understand what the genesis of that information was. That was from my conversations with Daptronics throughout the times that we had to fix it. So we did request I've parts him, and sure. we're, we're unable to replace parts. Yes, and three years ago, that's why we started the process, you know, with conversations on and we're with Daptronics. Okay, because he stood here like the next board meeting and said every single part in that board is still being manufactured currently that's by that company. That's one of the things that kind of made me step back from dealing with him in all this time. Now all of a sudden, it's no big deal. Okay. Yeah, Rick, from a technology, I have a master's of, in computer science, and I understand a little bit about hardware, computer hardware. There are certain things called capacitors that have acid in them, 
and they wear out from time to time, and that's what makes your computer sometimes go dark because those little things need to be taken out and replaced. So it's, a, it's called planned obsolescence so that the buyer needs to refresh some purchase every five or seven or ten years, whatever, the, whatever it is. So to say we have a piece of equipment that we've, you know, in, in supply that's 10 years old that we could just mail out to you. Sometimes you don't want to get a 10 year old piece of, uh, you know, well, it, perfectly yeah, unused just, equipment because it's was, already they, obsolete. They still currently manufacture. That's what I don't understand. Right. I don't understand that. So uh, somewhere in there, 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 again, we're in the, this murkiness. This is what I'm trying to, to, to establish. To, um, I, I just feel like between that and, um, the timing of the revelation of the Monroeville Mall tax reassessment at that meeting, and, and I understand there were certain circumstances involved with, that was, the, again, Mr. Bowe's first meeting, and we wanted to include him in executive, so we went to executive after that meeting, and that's when we learned that. And it, just uh, everything about that meeting is, is just clawing at me right now. I, I think knowing that we just, that we were taking a million and a half dollar hit going into that meeting, and I, I forget the numbers, Mr. Shaw, maybe you, you might have it in front of you, but we voted on a tremendous amount of expenditures that night, including the, the $300,000 scoreboard. We were in the millions of dollars, I believe. A million, eight, eight hundred twelve thousand dollars Yeah, you know what I mean? Without having the information that we were coming up a million and a half short, you know, as a result of the, the mall reassessment. So that, and then you add to it the, the discrepancy of whether our scoreboard is repairable or not. Um, you uh, you didn't give a number, but you agreed to a number that was around $100,000 to replace the current scoreboard with basically what we have. And then we find out that the, the actual price of that's around, I want to say, fifteen to $18,000. So, all this adds up to my mind to, to a concern that, you know, to, to move forward as a board, you know, one of the, I'm getting off track here, but it will come back. One of the, what I see, one of the, the trappings of being a board member is micromanagement and, and trying to do too much as a board member, you know what I mean? And, and over trying to oversee every part of every process when it comes to the district and when it comes to the administration. And, and I don't feel like that's our job. I feel like that's why we hire y'all. And we need to have a, a pretty considerable amount of trust, you know, in this room and throughout the district between the board and the administrators and those of, those of you that are coming to us looking for money to, to spend, that you are coming to us with the best possible information and that everything that's coming to us is, is going to give us the, the, the best options and a way forward to make the best informed decision. Now, I feel like we were pretty harshly misled in that meeting about this scoreboard purchase. And I'm not saying, I'm not accusing you of anything you know, right now, but that's why I'm asking these questions, because I can't get past the fact that I feel like we were not necessarily lied to, but misled, you know, and pushed towards buying the scoreboard. And with the number of large, large projects looming in this board's future, um, there, there, that level of trust has to be there moving forward, or else, you know, this board's not going to be able to, to operate within, the, you know, the best interests of the community and the taxpayer. So I don't know if anybody else has any questions or comments on this but no I, I agree with you but I, I also think that if I'm a vendor and I'm coming in here and I have an opportunity to sell the school a three hundred thousand dollar scoreboard I might lead the maintenance director in the direct well that's gonna cost you a lot to fix that da 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 because they want to bring in the three hundred thousand dollar school board. And I also agree that uh, micromanaging isn't a good thing to do but I think that the makeup of this school board, which I like, catches those things. And, you know, this school board has been very fiscally responsible as the school board be before was. And because of the makeup, I think that you'll find that 
we catch those things and we take a step back and we look at and say, you know what, now is not a good time to purchase a $300,000 scoreboard because we just got hit with this bill from the mall and uh, placement and, and uh, we took a step back and we decided it would be the best interest of the taxpayers and the school to get sponsorship for that. And in the meantime, that's when Dak Trons came in here and said, well, you know what, we, the price of this board new would probably be 15 or 20. I have all the parts and all that. He changed his tune a little bit too because he still wants. Right, that's why I was asking business. if we have any kind of um, documentation of where so we attempted to I, find parts and replace them and fail. I have been here. And short and of that, we're just in this. And the school, the, said she said thing the scoreboard has failed a number of times. Well, I know no the question about failed. that. And I know that they've tried to get it fixed, and they want to get it fixed because they don't want it to fail during a football game, or et cetera. So I'm sure that on our end that Mr. Bob has the best interest of the school in his mind. You know, I don't, and Mr. Short, Dr. Short, everybody here is on the same page. You know, and they're looking out for the best interest of the school. And the timing of uh, the scoreboard and the mall all coincided at one point. But as a board, we were able to step back and we, we caught it. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay. I mean, Mr. Brown, please don't take any of this personally. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. Yeah, I would that. too. Um, it was pretty ironic that when that company was not the selection uh, you know, the superintendent and the committee, all of a sudden he was able to do something he wasn't able to do for the last five years. You know, it only came out when he was not going to be the recipient of us buying a new scoreboard. You know, I was taken back by that as well as you were, um, and I lost a lot of faith in that company at that point just for that. Not that they weren't a good company, because they are. They're one of the tops in the country, just like OES. As far as the cost, you know, of $100,000, that was, you know, Mr. Bova just had some numbers there, and I never had a cost for it. I was asked to look into a new scoreboard, not into the repair of it. So you know, a replacement of the existing. We were looking to go to what's out there today. So that really was never a option that was on my table to look I, I, at. I understand it, and if you rewatch the meeting, Mr. Bova actually asked you what would a, a new scoreboard as we have cost. You you wouldn't give a number because you didn't have a number, no, have. which I think if you'd have stuck with that, we'd have been better off. Yeah, no, yeah. Whenever you did say the 100,000, you said that's actually probably more accurate. But if you're telling me now you didn't have those numbers, I, I, would, prefer, I, I, would, it then. I would prefer I prefer an I don't know well, over well, yeah, something like that. Hey, you know what I mean? Can I speak? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Scotty, can I speak? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm appalled by Rick McIntyre trying to tell me I'm the chair of the buildings and grounds. Bob Brown's the boss and Mr. Uh, Dr. Short's. We went into looking for a new scoreboard. When we met Jerry the first time, he's with uh, Deltronics. He never mentioned one time, he says, that scoreboard was unrepairable and it would cost too much to repair. Okay, besides that, we wanted a new scoreboard. Not to try to slide anything under the table with none of your board members because I'm here for the taxpayers of this community. I'm not here buying this new scoreboard and getting, give me a feather in my cap. The thing is, but the worm came out of the can when you, uh, Mr. Uh, McIntyre, on your own, invited Jerry from Deltronics to enter one of our board meetings, which we already discussed this matter with him, but instead of you coming to me as a chair or Mr. Brown or Mr. Short, informing us that he was going to attend our meeting because he had some a chip on his shoulder because we never gave him the opportunity for his bet which was a lie um, we could have said no we don't want when he had his chance we don't want him in front of the public but we, we was good enough to bring him up on board for his discussion but not one time 
that he said that scoreboard could be repaired never gave us a price because the only thing he had in his mind was the three hundred fifty thousand three no three hundred ninety thousand dollar bid that he told us at the beginning. Then he finds out by somebody's I don't know who he found out by that the other guy's bid was a little low, a lot lower than his bid. So all of a sudden he's going to come up with a magic number after we went through this for four or five months with this guy. So I'm just telling the taxpayers of Monroeville and Pickett, and I wasn't out there to spend your money. We had orders and we were discussions with the, with the head people with this um, board and also with the uh, maintenance supervisor that we were going to get a new scoreboard and that's what we needed. And that's the reason the figures came out the way they did. And I'm still appalled that we overturned the 7-2 vote. Thank you. George, to answer part of that, Rick asked me if the individual could come and speak that evening, and I said, yes, that's okay. And I didn't think it was going to turn into what it turned into. And I should have informed Dr. Short and the rest of the board that that individual was going to be there. So Rick did not himself invite him. Okay, I didn't know that, but the thing is, you should at least inform the board that he was going to be here then. Uh, we, uh, if I remember correctly, we had executive uh, prior to that meeting, and, and we had about a five to ten minute discussion on the matter, and we decided as a board at that point to, to allow the man to speak. Now, and, and I understand why you're upset, George, and I'm sure we're going to be fine after this meeting. <laughs> as we always are, but I mean, this is why we have these discussions. So uh, my, my question is though, and this is for, for both of you gentlemen, if he stood there and said things that you knew to be patently false, why was there no question? Why was there no redirect? Why didn't anybody call him on it? If he stood in here and was lying to the board and somebody here knows that it's a lie, it's your, I feel like it's our obligation uh, to I questioned him on a few things that evening about his warranty and also all of a sudden he could find sponsors for us which was never brought up to, with our private meetings with this gentleman. And he, ever, he, ever said, he was giving us a five, five year warranty all of a sudden he came up with a ten year warranty because he found out that other company was coming up with a ten year warranty. Yeah, I questioned him on, on that that evening. All right, but but if, he, if all along he has told us that the repair costs of our current scoreboard were unsustainable and not worth it and then he turned around in this meeting because to me that's the big that's the turning point in where we went from fixing what we have to getting the what did bruce called the, the super scoreboard um if that was the the turning point and he flipped his position on that at that meeting i was not aware at that point that he had ever told anybody on this board or administration that the parts were not available or that we could not repair it. If he says that in the meeting, now all of a sudden he, he's, we can fix everything for 15 cents. And I feel like somebody in this room that knows that that was BS needs to step up and call it. And, so, and, Rick, and another thing he didn't state, which I, when I met him afterwards too, at another date, it's not only the parts in that uh, scoreboard, but the whole frame's rotten out on that. Okay, you, it's like putting an engine in a rotted car. How much can you? How much life can you get out of it? If you keep on, you, you can keep on welding, but after a while, you can't rot, weld on rot. That's another thing that we have problems with that scoreboard. Yeah. Well, this, like we're back at square one. So, is is this thing fixable or not? We had a guy stand there and insist. Well, I think Mr. Ritter's resolution is to at least get somebody in here to look at it. Didn't, no, I mean, wasn't that part of it? Is to get the current scoreboard up to snuff? Mr. Brown, is it? You envelop that with the table. Proceed with the repair slash maintenance of the existing scoreboard. Correct. So I think our next step forward is to have somebody come in. If we're not comfortable with Dactronics, I actually I did understand. that. I did that after that meeting because of what was here. I didn't feel it's my place to argue with a guest of the board. Um, he can say whatever he wants, whether or not you believe it or not. That's, you know, something you got to decide. It wasn't up to me to stand here and have an argument with him. But at that, after that meeting, I reached out to our other competitor in there and they said, you know, that they can get those, they can get the parts to gut it and redo it. Dactronics obviously can too. We did meet with them after that just to show that you know you're you're going to get a fair shot 
had it. Uh, myself, uh, Mrs. Warning, Mr. Lapsovich, uh, the other Mr. Brown, we all sat with him on, I believe it was two different occasions, to make sure everything between the companies was apples to apples as best that we could from two different manufacturers. Um, and you know that's where we left it. At that point, we never we haven't gone any further with any changes based on the concerns of sponsorships. Uh, we, I proceeded with Dr. Short to try to put something together, but I knew that talking to the other company that in some way I can have it, you know, gut it, take all the parts out, and redo it at a reasonable price. And we were waiting to see what the what the effects of the sponsorships were. So we know we're at that drop dead point. So you know that was what Dr. Short and I spoke about just the other day about you know at that point we'll move forward with repairing it and then still work on the sponsorships. So so I think just to wrap it up for my end anyway. I don't know if anybody else wants to really keep talking about this much longer well i think just so you know i think this is all out of order i told you that before i think <laughs> you guys aren't going to have anything to talk about when it comes back on the floor because we've already had the conversation well, i mean at, I this point, at this point i mean it's all kind of enveloped with the current scoreboard there's the resolution on the table you know, on the table the new scoreboards all you know been tabled you know what i mean so some of this i think is open for discussion but just to, to <coughs> sum up the, you know, where I am anyway. Um, I, you know, I came in this meeting feeling like I was misled in, in some capacity about this freaking scoreboard issue. And you know, I'm walking away from it tonight feeling that you know maybe it wasn't you that misled me, but that um, not intentionally. Right. No. And again, I never, I didn't come in here, Mr. Brown, to come in and attack you. I just needed answers. Yeah, and I was not aware that until tonight that Dactronics had told us that that board was irreparable. So that, that to me is a very big piece of information. One that probably would have been more helpful at the meeting whenever he spoke, but I understand your, your, your point that you don't want to get up and have and start an argument. That meeting ran pretty long as it was. Um, so I, what, I think what we're saying at this point is that we feel that uh, Mr. Zaleski Zaleski is possibly the one that intentionally or not uh, misled the board in dealing with this issue. So. so in order to wrap this up, Scotty, I would like to say that's why I tried to be pretty clever in constructing this. That is, we have a motion to table and we, we're not talking about the purchase of a new scoreboard, but the other part we are talking about, proceed with the repair and maintenance of the existing scoreboard. So if Mr. Brown, in his attempt to carry this portion out, proceeds to try to repair or maintain it, he's free to come back to the board and say, you know what, we opened it up, we look further, it, it would be a waste of money to proceed with the repair and the maintenance. With that new information, then the board could be free to untable the purchase of the other piece of equipment and move forward. I, so I, 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 I would be happy if you would come back in a month or two or three and say, you know what, it's not working out. That would be a great report and that would be an action item for us. No, I'm just saying. That would be clarity. In other words, we, we ha it, it, would, it would relieve the, um, the murkiness about which we're so um, frustrated right now. Can I make it's good to know something is either succeeds or fails. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Mary Beth. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Go ahead. I just think, in light of the changes in our budget and the feedback that we received from the public on a scoreboard purchase, that it's our responsibility to acknowledge the changes and the public dissatisfaction with proceeding in light of making budget cuts, layoffs, and a potential tax increase that's probably going to pass. I would love to get a new scoreboard, but I think we need the sponsors to be secured before we spend the money. And tabling it just gives the public the assurance that we're doing that. Did you get that? And, and we, we've yes. We've agreed to that. We've agreed to that. Yeah. She was gone for a while, I believe she dropped out back at 8 o'clock. Yes. 
All right, we're done. We we beat this to death. <laughs> uh, just one last little thing. Oh, in, in the future, God. when we have a meeting where we're voting on close to two million dollars worth of expenditures, and there's a piece of information where we're going to take a million and a half dollar hit, find a way, find a way to, to let us know before the vote. Brian, could you write a find a way resolution? <laughs> you know what I mean? Looking back at that, I think that we should have probably sworn Mr. Bova in, immediately gone to the executive and had a discussion. You know what I mean? Or a, a simple note left in front of us on the water. Something like that. It, it, we need to be as informed as possible to, to make the right decisions. I mean, I don't and, think that they intended for it to be like no, that. No, no, and I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying when we make a mistake, we have to, and I think we can acknowledge that maybe that was a mistake. We need to, you know, identify and figure out a way to, to not repeat that mistake in the future. So it's not no hard feelings here. I don't think anybody's trying to you know, pull the wool over our eyes necessarily, but that could have been, that could have changed the way some of the votes went. So, find a way. <laughs> right. That, that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Bob, you can have a seat over here. <laughs>